All right, so today we're going to be talking about attack order in Honkai Star Rail and how that can benefit your damage and just being able to get through more content more quickly in the game. So when we talk about attack order, it is the order that your team is able to attack in combat. You know, you have like they'll have like the little turn order thing on the side and you'll be able to see, you know, who's going in what order. Now, the reason this is so important is because you want to be able to maximize your damage dealers and just make sure they can do the most damage as possible. Because, like, sure, you know, if you have your damage dealer go first, they'll do some solid, they'll probably do some good damage if, they, if they're built right on the first turn. But then I feel like once you get, yeah, well, due to the way that, you know, buffs and debuffs work and just general support, you're going to have a lot more benefit from having your supporting characters go before your damage dealer so that they can, whether it be heal you after an enemy attack, to buff you before you attack, or to apply debuffs to the enemy. Because debuffs are typically, at least in my experience, based on you know when the enemy attacks. So you definitely want to make sure that you debuff and then you also take advantage of, the, of those debuffs before the enemy's next turn happens. So, the way I sort of recommend to handle most team comps, which there is one exception, and I'll go over that in a bit here, is you want to first have your supports. And realistically, this could be in any order of your healer characters, like Bailu and Natasha. Then you want to have your... Um, and then you want to have also your support characters in this as well, whether it be your offensive buffers like Asta or your debuffers characters like Welt or Pella. So then once you have all those going, you'll have your buffs going, your debuffs, your healers in front are ready to either um, heal you after an attack or just like do a normal to get you another skill point. Then you want to have your DPSs, you know, like Serval or Sila. To be able to just maximize how much damage they can do because now that they're attacking after your buffers and debuffers go you're going to be able to do more damage whereas if your dps goes first you know that first attack isn't going to do as much damage like it'll still probably do good damage if you have them built properly but they're not going to be doing the same level of damage as if you allow them to get buffed first allow the enemy to get debuffed right before they attack and also you know having healers go before can make sure that they stay healthy now, the one exception to this, and I'll show it in combat as well, are team comps that revolve around Branya. Because Branya has a very fun skill where she basically can give you an extra turn. Thus, you know, giving you more. It gives you an extra turn, she gives you damage boosts as well. So. For Branya, it's a little bit different. So I'll show you how my team comp tends to uh, work with that. Yeah, like obviously here, my, uh, my my speed stats aren't perfect on my team because I do have my healer going last. But actually, here you know what? Let me switch her for Natasha because I think my Natasha has more speed than my Bailu. So yeah, let me just go into this run, and as you can see here. This is the exception I was talking about. You want to have your D if you're running a Brania team with a hyper carry DPS like Sila, or if you're using another hunt DPS if you don't have Sila like Don Hung or Su Shang, for example, you want to have that DPS go first. Now the reason you want that to happen is because they're going to be able to get their attack like right here. Let's say I attack this guy. Then you know my supports and stuff like that go. I have Natasha and Asta, like Natasha. Shouldn't need to do healing here. She can get the break on this guy. Then Asta can attack you. And then now we get to Branya. And so Branya is going to give that extra turn to Sila. So instead of Sila going once in this cycle, she's going to go twice. And if you're able to get a kill, you know, with Sila specifically, you get to go again. So that's just going to give her a lot more damage that way and really just be able to accelerate you know how fast you're going to be able to do, uh, get to the content here so now i get an extra turn and i get my ultimate and because of that sila is able to just dominate and then yeah extra turn there 
So yeah, and then since now Natasha is right after the enemy pretty much, she was able to heal us up after the damage we've taken. So now Asta's back to full health. And it pretty much just goes like that. If you're in multi-phase battles like this, it'll typically like reset uh, the order to the you know like your main order. So now I'm back to having Sila first, then Natasha, then Asta, then Branya, and then Branya will give Sila another turn, which is going to be really helpful. So yeah, that is just a general guide to um, to attack order because it's something really important to you know just kind of work on over time. Now I've. There are people that are going to be like, hey, like you want to have this specific speed value or like think about like specific numbers for speed. I don't think you like particularly need to do that. Like, it, there, like there's mathematical times where it's really good too. But the fact of just making sure like the numbers within your team, no matter what they are, like follow the rule, the kind of rules that I said with having your healers, buffers and debuffers going before your DPS. Except for Branya team. Branya team's you know being a little different. Um, as long as you follow that sort of framework, then you're going to be able to do a lot of damage, and you know it should help you to get through content as well. Since you know the more buffs you have, the more damage you're going to do. The more debuffs you have, the more damage enemies are going to take. So it's really, it's really just a good thing to look out for and to think about when you're building your teams. But with that, I am going to end off here. Thank you all for watching. I hope this guide was helpful. If you enjoyed, be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. And with that, thank you all for watching, and I will see you all next time.